What's up, fam? Listen, thank you again for joining us at what we call Word Therapy. This is where we take the truth of Scripture and use it to therapeutically treat our lives. Uh, because we believe that the Word of God is the answer, and there's an answer in every word that comes from the Lord. Listen, what I found out in Scripture is that anything that leads to godliness and life, God has made available for us. I'll say that again. Anything that leads to godliness and life, God has made that available for us. There is a term when we look in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, and when you get a chance, check it out, uh, 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 and you'll find these words there that God made man in his image, mankind in his image and his likeness, his image and his likeness, the Omago day, the image bearers of God. So when God wants to be seen directly in the earth, he needs or he uses someone to bear his image and his likeness. In other words, we have God's DNA in us. We have God's DNA in us and we are to bear his image and his likeness. And so we're to reflect him. And so now godly attributes are in you. Godly attributes are in me. And he then has made a certain preference of life, a certain preference of living that he's made available for us, a certain preference, a certain style, a certain caliber of life that he's made available for us. And it's, it's summarized, summarized as extraordinary living, extraordinary living, uh, the overflow life, the abundant life, the more than enough like the always ascending life. This is the life that God has made available for us. And so we've spent the entirety of this year on Sundays and on Thursdays emphasizing this to uh, our, our church community and to those of you that watch us abroad uh, from different places. Um, we've been emphasizing this extraordinary life, this extraordinary life. And so now we are summarizing uh, this year using this closing theme, this closing theme for our study for the year. Next level living. Next level living has been our general theme, but subtopically, we're going to talk today from this thought, work what you have. Just go ahead and put that uh, statement in the chat. Work what you have. Work what you have. Work what you have. I want you to join me uh, as the, the, the Dr. Luke of Scripture. Luke writes in Luke 19, uh, verses 16 and 17. Luke 19, verses 16 and 17. Luke 19, verses 16 and 17. And I'm reading from the New International uh, Version of the Word of God. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking to heaven. He gave thanks, broke them. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. Verse 17 says, they all were satisfied. And the disciple picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over, that were left over, that were left over. Uh, there's a term that in uh, the biblical study world known as synopsis, and uh, it is um, a form of similitudes or similarities that are shared between these gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, particularly Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I took this particular narrative of the story of the two fish and five bodily loaves because I, I wanted to emphasize and share something uh, with you and I that will help us understand that God's preference for the life and the lifestyle that we are privileged to be afforded, we are privileged to be afforded, is next level, It's next level. In other words, uh, 
culture should be looking to us for how to live and us not looking to culture for how to live. I'll say that again. Culture should be looking to us, those that are people of faith, those that have relationship with the almighty creator, uh, how to live. And we shouldn't be designing our lives based off of how culture suggests things ought to be done. And so I, I, I wanted to share and show something as we, we ease into this introduction for the lesson of the day. One of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned is the importance of effort. I'll say it again. One of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned is the importance of effort, 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 effort. When, 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 when something seems to be unachievable, or inachievable, uh, we have one or two options. When something seems to not be able to be achieved, unachievable, inachievable, we have one or two options. The first option we can accept, never trying as a response. That's, that's option number one. We can accept, never trying as our response. The second option that I've come to realize that in many cases seem to be the least one attempted, okay? It is to make an effort to achieve what has not been done before. Uh, my, my coach would, would, would frame it this way. He talks about um, inferior fear and in superior fear and inferior fear. One, uh, inferior fear is unwilling to try. Superior fear is the one that is willing to try, scared, unsure, and uncertain because at least an effort would have been made to do what hadn't been done before. And so through the thread of scripture, throughout the thread of scripture, we can see example after example of individuals or groups achieving inconce uh, 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 inconceivable okay, feats because of one word, effort. They were willing, he or she was willing to put forth an effort. And so this is, this is kind of where we want to begin to build our communication as it relates to uh, this particular stance that we're taking as it relates to this next level living. And we've got to be willing to work what we have. We've got to be willing to work what we have. There's a woman in scripture that husband passes away and leaves her with debt, leaves her with debt. Instead of having a pity party, instead of, of feeling sorry for herself, this woman gets wise counsel. And from the wise counsel that she got, a plan of action, a strategy, she then applies this plan, this information, this strategy, and she is able to eliminate the debt and her and her sons live off the rest because she was willing to make an effort. Not only that, there's another individual in scripture by the name of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was able to rebuild his hometown wall, the entrance into his city in a record number of days. In 52 days, he was able to rebuild the entrance area, uh, the wall uh, back in a record time because him and those that were willing to work with him, willing to work with him, were willing to put forth the effort. And so when I began to understand that, another word for effort is the word work. Another word for effort is the word work. And so the question really is, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the work that is going to be required 
to overcome your fears or your hesitation or your uncertainty? Are you willing to work on the way that you think and the way that you perceive things and the way that you do things? Are, are you willing to put in the work? Are we willing to put in the work to become the best versions of ourselves that we can possibly become? Because if that be the question, our answer is going to be determined by whatever perspective we have at next level living, okay? Because next level living is possible for all of us. Now, we define next level living as a certain quality of life that has been designed to allow us to live life without limitation. Okay? And I, I, I want you to put your mind around this. It's to, to be able to live a certain quality of life that's already been designed for you. You don't have to design this lifestyle. This lifestyle has already been designed for you and I. I don't have to design this, but it's to always be ascending, to always be accelerating, to always be able to adjust and make the necessary pivots to continue to win in life, no matter what level, but no, no matter what level that you and I are. And so I, 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 I wanted to ease right on up into this. And so this, this particular uh, passage in, in Luke that we are referencing for our discussion, our sermonic spotlight or our teaching spotlight uh, for uh, this evening. I, I thought it was interesting because Jesus now um, has, has been teaching and he pulls his understudies, he pulls his apprentices away and uh, word gets out where they are and a massive crowd begin to make their way to to where Jesus is, because not only did he teach them the word, he healed them. And so holistic ministry uh, addresses the whole man, okay? Holistic ministry addresses the whole man, the spirit, the soul, the body, the emotion, the intellect, uh, the affection. It, it addresses the whole man. And so ministry, the God kind of ministry, kingdom ministry, addresses the whole, the whole man. So after being with Jesus all day long, the crowd hasn't gotten ready to leave him. His apprentices want the crowd to leave him. And so they say, hey, we're, we're in, we're in this resort, we're in this isolated space and we, we need to send them away so that we can find food and lodging for ourselves. And Jesus said, huh, what's up with you all? That's not good customer service. That's not being attentive and caring about the audience that has been with us all day long. Listen, we can't do them like that. We can't just feed their spiritual man and leave their natural man lacking. We can't address one part of them and not address the other part of them and understanding they've been with us all day. And so now this wasn't a scheduled group gathering or anything of that nature, but this massive gathering, Jesus says, hey, they've come and they thought enough of me that they would trust me to add value to their life by sharing with them the truth of scripture, the truth of God's word, the intent of how God wants us to live, I've got to care enough about them to make sure that um, they're not leaving empty-handed. They, they they're being well taken care of. So he says, sit them down. And they sat them down. And Jesus says, and asks them the question, uh, let's feed them. And this is where our text begins to take its form. says, but all we have is these two fish and uh, five barley loaves of bread. We got five loaves of bread and two fish. The only way that this massive crowd will be able to be fed because it's 5,000 men, not including women and children. Okay? 
So this massive audience that has gathered and received the teaching of Scripture, Jesus says before they leave, okay, it's kind of like after the revival and then we have the after revival meal, <laughs> you know, where folks are able to get uh, something to eat as they leave. This, this is the dynamics of the structure of this lesson. And, 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 but it was so much more than to that than just that. So much more to this than just that. What, what are you saying? Jesus teaches us an essential lesson in how to work what you have. He doesn't say go and look for somewhere else, somewhere else to get more of what you have. He says, we're going to use what you told me you got to work with. In other words, he gives a different perspective to how to work what you have. <laughs> can, can we explore this just for a moment uh, to, to kind of give some understanding and clarity to how some of us possibly have been missing out not because God doesn't want us to have it, but because of how we've been looking at what we have to work with. And this messed me up. This was a game changer uh, for me and how I pursue and look at uh, the different things that God has made available uh, for me to be able to use, uh, whether it is in my spiritual life, my personal life or my professional life. I, I use this framework in every area uh, now to, to, to ask myself uh, these uh, important questions to how to move and to how to respond when life be life, when, when situations be happening, uh, when people be people and the Bible keeps on Bible. And in other words, what I'm saying to you, God gives us an answer for how to deal with odds that seem to be unachievable. Okay. I, I, I want to share with you, and I want to show you this. Um, in this writing of Luke chapter 19, the A part of the verse says, taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking unto heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Okay. In essence, Jesus says, give me what you have. So you said we have five loaves, two fish. Give them to me. I'm going to be thankful to have something to work with. That's a message all within itself. I believe to some level ingratitude is sin. In, in, in essence, they're minimizing what God is about to show us how to maximize. They're looking at what they have as not enough. And from a natural perspective, that could be the case. But it depends on whose hand what you have is in. Or are you putting your life in his hand? This is anthropomorphic. This is giving God human attributes. Are you putting your family in his hand? Are you putting your finances in his hand? In essence, this is a lesson of surrendering what you have to the most reliable, intelligent, wise steward that exists. God is putting it in his hand. And so the first thing that this passage shows us in the A part of verse 16 is how to optimize, how to optimize. And when I'm talking about optimizing, I'm talking about it from the perspective to make the best use of what you have. In, in, in some cases, it's not that you don't have anything. It's not that I don't have anything. It's not that we don't have What's necessary is that we hadn't optimized it. In other words, we hadn't made the best use of it. Mm, man, I'm sensing God up in this. 
So when I say optimize, it's to make the best use of what you have. It's to make the best use of what you have. Are you using what you have in the best way? Are you using who you have in the best way to be able to achieve the task that you are attempting to accomplish? It's to make the best use. What do you mean? What do you mean? Um, what do you mean by that? There's a passage of scriptures in the, in, in the New Testament um, that talks about how God is now allowing uh, the church to take form, the, the, the church as we know it to begin to take form. We know that uh, Constantine was instrumental uh, in uh, that day of, of, of causing the evolution of church to uh, go from houses to cathedrals to gathering centers. Now, watch this. And, and so there's this massive growth in the church is taking place. And uh, the disciples or the apostles or the bishops of that day have now uh, had the mixture of Jews and non-Jews together. And one of them was feeling as if they were being uh, underserved. They were experiencing a disservice because they weren't getting the daily portion of what was necessary to take care of that particular people group. Come here. What ends up happening, the apostles get together and they get the wisdom of God, make a decision to appoint some men, to appoint some individuals that met a particular criteria that would be able to assist in making sure that no one was lacking. Oh, what, what am I getting at? They weren't above doing the work, but they were saying that this isn't the best way to optimize what we have to offer. In order to optimize what we have to offer is for us to stay in prayer and in the word of God. So are we are we overutilizing some people in some areas that where we're not getting the best use of them? Oh, Lord. <laughs> OK, are, are we expecting some people to do more uh, in extending themselves? instead of doing more in expressing themselves. So if, if, if I'm expected to spread wider, okay, um, and, and, and go here and there and there and here, well, I'm not going to have the kind of quality time that I need to spend in the Word of God to be able to study and hear God so that when it's time for me to share what God has said to me in private and public to the people, I'm not, I'm not optimizing uh, the word of God because I hadn't been able to spend time. So they said, wait, let, let, let's solve this issue. To optimize us is allowing us to stay in prayer in the word of God. But to optimize meeting the needs of these people, there are some people among you that meet the criteria that we're laying out before you that can help us in this area. So the first thing that I saw that I thought was poignant as it relates to this discussion is assess your optimization. Are you making the best use out of the space and out of the people and out of uh, the items that are at your discretion? We have to optimize. We have to optimize. We have to optimize. But then the B part of the verse says something real powerful, people. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. Wait a minute, Jesus. Hold up. Hold up. Y'all, let, let's not rush past that. They said they got five loaves of bread, two fish to work with. That's all they got. Jesus turns around takes what they have, looks to heaven, gives thanks for it, and then turns around and begin to break it. He's breaking it to the point to where his 12 disciples that are split out among this massive crowd 
are able to service them. Y'all, he's made the best use of what he had, and now he's maximizing what he has. The second thing is once we get to the point of optimizing, we move from optimizing to maximizing. When I talk maximizing, it's getting all that you can get out of what you have. So it's one thing to make the best use. It's another thing to get everything that you can get out of. <laughs> Teach, boy. Okay. All right. All right. So, so the second thing Jesus now does and gives us this masterful lesson and how to work what we have, the second thing he does, he maximizes. You know, the other narratives of this particular story uh, or this teaching in scripture says he put the men in groups of 50. But you remember, it wasn't just men, it was women and children in the other narratives, okay? So now 5,000 men, possibly their family and kids, their wives and kids are with them. How do you take this small amount and feed so many. Optimizing, and he maximizes. He maximizes. He gets everything that he can get out of it. Uh, for those that eat from different tables, or in 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 some cases, uh, when uh, those that are are, are meat eaters. <laughs> There are different parts of a lot of different animals that are broken down for us to be able to ingest and digest, okay? Uh, in other words, they're maximizing, they're optimizing and maximizing, making the best use. Secondly, getting everything that you can get out of it to maximize it to maximize it. Are we maximize? Because what I found out about God and my journey with him, God isn't wasteful. God isn't wasteful. Nothing that he has constructed, designed, created, it doesn't, it, it, it all plays a purpose. And how life is shaped for us. And so if that's the premise of our creator, should that not be the premise and practice of us? Are we maximizing the space? Are we maximizing um, uh, the usage of what's at our discretion? Are we maximizing our resources? Are we maximizing our relationships? Are we, maxim are we getting everything that we can get out of this time span that we're in called life? Are we maximizing? That's a real question that we have to ask ourselves. So it's to optimize, it's to maximize. But then lastly, you all look at verse 17, if you will. Look at verse 17, if you will. Not only has he taken what they offered, he looked up to heaven, uh, he break it, uh, he blessed it, uh, he gave thanks for it. He's distributed, and that's going to be another whole lesson, to his assistants that were assisting him and taking care of this need. But then lastly, they ate and they were satisfied. In other words, it wasn't just given to say, get a taste of this. It was enough of it so that they were filled, they were full. They could go on the journey, uh, the, 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 the departure journey, well satisfied spiritually and naturally now, okay? So they, 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 they ate and they were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over. The whole audience, the whole assembly, all of the people not only ate, they were satisfied. Okay. Ah, let me not stay there long. It's, it's one thing to eat. 
It's another thing to be satisfied. In other words, they left full, y'all. <laughs> I don't want to. They, they, they left full. I hope you're seeing the metaphor parallel here that this life that God has made, we're supposed to live it to the full. So whenever I'm in the circumference, I'm in the present, I'm in the space where God is ministering, where God is serving us. We're not supposed to just leave empty-handed. We're supposed to leave full. Woo! <laughs> okay, so they, they, they've eaten, they're full, they're satisfied, and now he's not wasteful. He says, get the leftovers. And I don't think God is wasteful not only in what he did, but what the writer entails in what they write. Twelve baskets. Twelve baskets. And there's a lot of different uh, schools of thought that, 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 that address this word usage of the number 12. That's not my point of emphasis today, this evening. My point of emphasis is after he optimizes after he maximizes, y'all, he multiplies. And I'm using multiplication from this perspective to diversify the use of what I have. To diversify the use of what I have. What do you mean? Okay. Was the crowd fed based off of the scripture? You would have to respond, absolutely yes. Okay. Now he's feeding them before he disperses them. OK, he's feeding them so that they can depart. So. If they've eaten, if they're full, if they're satisfied and they're departing from him. He collects through the disciples, through his apprentices, through his assistants, 12 baskets of leftovers. Somebody's going to eat later. Are there other audiences that are going to be benefit benefactors of what's left over? Oh, let me get out of this. In, in other words, when, when God does what he does, he does it in such a way that not only does it impact us now, it should impact us and others later. I hope you caught that. His, his impact isn't supposed to be felt just in the moment. His impact should be felt later through others because it multiplies. Others are able to eat off of what it is you've been able to become better because of. They're, they're able to be the benefactors of what was left over. This has been my time with you. I wanted to emphasize this as we prepare to close with prayer. I wanted to remind you that God is giving you something to work with. And if you work what he gave you, optimize what he gave you, maximize what he gave you. He'll multiply what he gave you. That there are so many individuals in scripture and those that are currently existing in culture, in the culture that we're in, that off of one item, off of one gift, off of one ability to do something, and they did it so well, they optimized and maximized. And now it's being diversified and multiplied in other arenas, in other areas of their life because they worked what they had. Father, we pray in Jesus' name for these precious people that are viewing our time with you and with them. And I pray now, like you gave Nehemiah strategy and the, the widow woman wise counsel, 
I pray in Jesus' name that you're downloading to this audience even now what's necessary to be able to optimize and maximize and multiply the outcome of adding value to others. And in doing so, you're adding value to them. I lift them up to you now in Jesus' name. And I pray that their results will be exceedingly abundantly above all that they're able to think or ask according to the power that's working in them. In Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless. Peace. We are grateful for the impactful message we received today and would like to take this opportunity to invite you to further connect with us. We offer three ways to foster that connection. Firstly, if you are interested in cultivating a personal relationship with God, we welcome you to do so. Secondly, if you feel the need to rejuvenate and be restored in God, we extend the invitation to you. And finally, if you desire to engage with a caring community that loves God and people, we encourage you to connect with our ministry. We understand that giving is an act of worship that is deeply personal between you and God. We believe that God empowers us to steward our resources wisely and multiply them. You can contribute through various platforms such as Cash App, Givelify, or Mail-in Seeds. Please note that Bishop has his separate and personal links for Cash App and Givelify. We express our gratitude for every seed sown and have faith that God will bless the givers abundantly in return.